Paul was the biblical father. Philip was the father. What are the fathers? Those are those people who have reached the height of Jesus, the maturity of Jesus. And these fathers, they were living a natural life. One of the fathers uh, who said about the rich man and Lazarus, And at what time, and sometime, this one person did some bad things at his life. It, it is told by Lazarus, and he is uh, buying out his sins, uh, willingly or unwillingly. The rich man, at one moment, at the very beginning, he did some very good things at, uh, to God. And one of the biblical fathers says about that, who was living a natural life. Those are little things which I'm sharing with you. I guess that there would be another reason. Uh, and many opponents would say, Christ has done everything at the cross and the, the main thing is just believe. But as we see in the Bible, we see that it is like that. Remember Paul, he also uh, turned away. Saul, Saul, uh, it is the Saul from the Old Testament in the second Samuel and God promised not a good thing, you know. Sorry, this is about David. We don't remember about uh, yesterday, but uh, David did it like uh, this sin and after only nine years. But these emotions were so high that this temptation was very high in his heart and he didn't control himself. So, Second Samuel chapter 24. You can see that there is no death sin in there. Yes? Which he shouldn't do. About the counting of uh, this nation. And again, you would tell, but where, where is the forgiveness of the sin? One of the examples as well. One would say, yeah, but that is the Old Testament. But let us see in the New Testament. Let us take a look in the New Testament. Apostle Paul, he, he did, uh, not knowing about Christ, he was chasing uh, the congregation. But he returned and he was chased after that. You remember 40 beatings. And let us take a look at Lazarus. Who was he? What is this that he was suffering? Nowadays, there are a lot of people who are suffering in the congregation nowadays. And the second thing, we are buying out ourselves with this type of suffering. Yes, it sounds uh, strange. We have been taught yeah, just simply believe and go whistling and yes and we we tie up Satan. Yes. Everything has its place and time. And a lot of people are being prayed for their diseases, but nothing happens. But the main thing is be humble before God. We are ill, but not. But uh, we don't have to be like uh, fasting, like, and nobody's living under the bridge. 
those who love God and come to congregation. Uh, anyway, uh, through this humbleness, it is uh, better to be healed uh, so that you wouldn't be uh, put away by God. As we take a look at Second Samuel chapter 24, that he chose to be in the hands of God, and then uh, God uh, was merciful against him. Because God saw that David was humble, and God uh, saved him because of buying out. Better to suffer here in humbleness, not, not like uh, saying some bad things to God, better to suffer here than in eternity. So that we would remember about the Lazarus and the rich man. So that it is like a thing for us to remember. Better to suffer here. This is fine. And not in eternity. And it is our belief, moreover. And who doesn't see? Yeah, that's his problem. But where you are in that type of position, that you are suffering for your sins, and you don't get away from your sins, this is belief and this is tr uh, trusting to God in the sense that you remember that uh, God is not deep, that you rem uh, understand that it is because of your sins, and one part is not uh, understanding it. And they are saying bad things to God, and they are crying, and, and they don't understand because it, it, because it is because of your sins, and it really cleanses your soul. And then you will be more, more precise to your uh, soul, more accurate against sin. And it doesn't mean that you have to be like this type of person who hasn't swept away the dust in his room and, you know, but uh, Paul also said uh, that who suffers in his body, then he doesn't sin, you know. It, it doesn't mean that you have to stop like uh, the working of uh, hospitals and pharmacies. But it is, uh, this means that you don't have to be like in despair, like, you know. But so that he doesn't kill himself with these uh, bad conditions, you know, like this depression. Or maybe he has some bad experience at his work or in his family. There might be a lot of examples. And when we understand this, we know how to be humble. And when you don't understand this, even Believers, they get into depression, they fall into depression, and the life hasn't been the right way, and yes, they are complaining all the time, yeah, and this attitude, oh, God loves you, ha, ha, ha. But when we understand this, then this moment would help to protect you from these negative things. It is uh, like a, a sign of your unbelief to God. When you are in depression, it is a sick, it is a consequence of your not believing to God. It's like uh, untrustworthiness to God. It's like a result of this. And we have to know this. I also have things for which I have prayed for a long time. And they say, but you are a believer. But you have to be humble. You have to be humble before God. And to be very accurate. It doesn't mean that you are in the death sense. No, it doesn't mean that. Because to turn away from the sin, we have to turn away also from the small things. 
So the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah. And it isn't uh, like uh, say that God will bless you, that he, he will protect you like all the time. He wasn't preaching like that. And let us see what he said. First chapter, second verse. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Yeah? And cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And then, chapter 3, Jonah, book of Jonah. Because yeah. the Jonah got the word and he had to preach. And he wasn't uh, preaching like these things like God will be blessing you, you know, but he said that you are sinner, and turn away. And I don't think that everyone was living like in death sins. No. And that they were unattentive to their death sin. No. But they turned away from sin. They, because it was preached like that. And it wasn't preached like that everything will be like fine. If Jonah would be preaching like that, nobody would have turned away from their sins. Because there are a lot of people who just say this, this thing, like they say, they count their sins, but they don't turn away from their sins. And then the verse 8, the end of the verse 7 as well, verse 10, you know it is the mm, Gospel of Matthew, As you see, as the John the Baptist was preaching, you know, bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. And here you see, as uh, John the Baptist was preaching, and there is not this, uh, you know, this sugar-coated gospel, you know. But here you can see, just turn away from your sins, as uh, John the Baptist was saying, because uh, he said that you, you have to have fruits of repentance. And also in the chapter 5, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, you know, 5, 4, you know, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that are crying in another translation. But in what time they will be blessed with the joy? When a person has a strong decision and a continuation, there has to be a continuation. Because you won't be joyful if you don't have a continuation. And these promises won't work. That you are free from your temptations, from sins. Interesting preaching. Uh, this happy preaching disappeared somewhere. And when we are uh, returning to God in belief, and there is no despair like then we have to understand that you have been put out of the hell, that you are being saved through all these difficulties. And when we understand this fact, you don't need to push out from yourself humbleness. When you are fighting up against your sin, you will be able to thank God. As it is written in New Testament, be thankful to God for everything. As a, because you are paying for your sins. You are... This is this... Uh, 
you show your belief in this way in front of God and you're and uh, you're showing that you love him this way and thanks for his grace I can show my belief to God and I will accept all of these difficult obstacles and when we have this type of position you'll be able to thank to God and angels and angels will take you to heaven one more moment so that we we have a clearance about talents one version I know that I'm repeating myself but it is a big thing and it could be an encouragement to others so about the talents because what we have been given these talents you know and what God has showed me about talents and I'm showing it to you and what you have understood about the spiritual things and about these uh, that you have to really put them into order like you know it doesn't mean that you show everything but you have to have uh, a nice situation so you have to be like uh, you have to be have to stay to really judge the situation so that whether to preach to one to somebody or not or if he's not uh, like uh, if he's not uh, accepting it, then don't then don't preach to him. So re reasonable, you have to be reasonable, you know, because the word of God is teaching us to do it, to be reasonable and to really and to put this your talent into action. It doesn't mean that you have to be smiling all the time. This uh, unnatural smile. It means that if the person is in this sense, you can tell him some elementary things and touch some eternal things and it could bring forth some fruit and your consciousness will be clean. We remember these, these grounds you know, there are different grounds and we don't know if this seed which has been sown what happens with it if uh, he has a decision of what he has been told by you or big or small thing about the seed it it brings forth fruit already, it has an effect already because the word of God, what it does, it makes it, it, it this uh, word it has been sown by you and then uh, when he makes a decision, it already has an impact on this person it is one of these small fruits, you know and if the person uh, if he is ashamed of his crime, what he has done, or if he has sinned, it, uh, it's an encouragement for us to see, to sow the seed to this person. And then one time, it's very important for this person because uh, he gets ashamed of something in his life. Maybe, maybe a different decision is being born by him we don't know but when we are preaching uh, turning away from sins or the repentance uh, and then uh, he has a different view on things and he is turning away from these bad things and it will be added to your uh, reward uh, whether he will turn away finally or just partly it doesn't matter you know, that's his part. 
It's a big plus. It is this thing that you have to gather the, the things here, not here, but in heaven, not not uh, not here on earth. We have to gather these uh, things. We are sowing, and then the fruits are being born. And even if this uh, person changes his view on other things, because uh, the other thing is, is yeah, maybe this person is like uh, saying all the time, like uh, why is this person all the time preaching to me? But that's uh, that's uh, he won't have any excuses in front of God. When he will be standing in front of him at the judgment day, uh, when uh, self-judgment is being born, and when he is enjoying these uh, sins of death, and when they are sowing this word, and when he has thoughts of turning away from these sins or and repenting of these bad actions. When, when you have sown this seed, it is counted into your account. It has been counted into your account. And be thankful. And I would like to tell you. So that, uh, I would like to really encourage you not to be like this pushy, like uh, pushy, but so that uh, we would be like reasonable sowers. That, uh, that we would be naturally uh, preaching to people and so that the Spirit of God is guiding us into this preaching, you know, the gospel and sowing the word. And sometimes we can talk to people in a natural way, not to be like this uh, pushy. Why? Because this is natural way. You have to preach in a natural way. So that not you are being like you have been jumped out from the moon and the person is uh, being afraid from you. But you have to be a natural person. And there will be chances, a lot of chances. Anyway, maybe make a video about it. What does it mean that if the person is uh, going to the church and if he doesn't know, don't have any fruits, then he is cursed. Maybe the person is going to church, he is reading the Bible, doing a lot of things. Then he, then there is this explanation of him and uh, comparison that he is uh, compared to like a tree which doesn't have any fruit. And another theme which I would like to show you. And if you get uh, will, even, even only just one person to uh, put him to the this narrow road, you know, to this road of righteousness, it's worthy of it. Then, and if you turn this person to the right way, then you are being blessed. And it is uh, put into your account. And it brings you an extra stimulus. We have to be afraid from God. That's the only thing. And uh, we also touched uh, the theme of uh, rich man and Lazarus. And there are four categories of people. Four categories of people. There is a person who is living like in a poverty, but who is going to heaven, but he is living a righteous life. Because he has a repentance, he has trustworthiness to God, he is attentive to his soul. The other person, which is a, which is a rich man, no, let us take the case of Lazarus, this story. 
And this person in the story of Rich Man Ladder, he was living in, uh, in a wilderness. And he was really taking care of his uh, brothers of uh, bottles. And I'm uh, looking for this for the prison of the biblical father. And I have to repeat that in Latvia there is no biblical father. But there have been, there is this thought of these biblical fathers. They have been saved, you know. And I, I looked uh, at the example of this rich man. He was living a very unrighteous life. One more version. When a person is living in poverty, but he's going to hell. And when you t uh, take a look at the example of the Lazarus, like, like, then you uh, look and you see that there's something uh, not right. But here is this uh, lifestyle, you know. Because an unbeliever, if he doesn't change his lifestyle, then he's going to hell, even if he's living in poverty. Because those people uh, who are living in poverty, they have also learned to live in the temptations, you know. And a lot of uh, people are being, are too drunk. They're, they're suffering with this drunkenness, these brothers of bottle, as they call it in And the fourth category, the person who is living a very hard life, and he's being taken to these uh, thoughts of suicide, is the most tragic life. The person, I know that there are some believers, that there are some thoughts be getting into their minds of uh, suicide. It is not a good sign, and they don't have any signs of like uh, knowing the will of God and the way of God. And uh, the things aren't being like uh, taken away from them. And here, as we can see, and he has these thoughts of uh, suicide, and these are the people who are in difficulties, and there are uh, 100 reasons for that, why he is he in these thoughts of suicide. Yes, this is a terrible situation, because he is suffering already here, and logically, Hell awaits him because he is practicing these that thing. It is the most terrible thing because suicide it takes away your chance to get into heaven. If you if you are committing a suicide, that's it. You don't have any chance of getting to heaven. You are already going to hell because a person who has a hard life. If if he, he has a chance to, to repent and to turn away from his sins, and he has a chance of getting to heaven. Because there are Christians around him. There is this uh, Christian radio. You can listen to it. And this uh, word of belief can get it into his heart. And he can practice the belief. And uh, for believers, if we have uh, difficulty, you have to uh, repent and we have to protect our souls from sin. Why do I talk so harsh? Not for everyone it is such a hard situation, a hard situation. Because this is a medication. Basically, it is the same principle. But when we understand.
them. This will protect us from the diseases and from sin. Because it is really a terrible situation when you are into sin and then you are this disease and you are cursing God. It is not the right way. And when we know the truth of uh, gospel, when you get healed, you won't get into other sins. You will, you will understand this. There is one more episode. There is uh, one more thing. If a person knows this uh, truth, but he is not doing anything for his soul, you know, it is already a blessing if he gets hurt, because if he can start to change and do the God's will. And the example we can see, the epistle of James, he, for this person who looked at the mirror, and then he went away. Let us believe that it was just for a short time and that he will... Chapter 1, verse 23, 24. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. There are also this type of persons as well. And there are a lot of people also in the congregation nowadays. We have you have heard of it, and these people aren't practicing belief. We, we are praying for these type of persons. And the most horrible thing is that the person hasn't understood it the right way. And it is also a bad thing, because Jesus said, because there are a lot of people who don't find this narrow way. Not all of the believers are finding this narrow way. And there are a lot of people who are not uh, going this narrow way. Yes, there are a lot of people who have seen this uh, evangelical truth. He has found it. And there is a chance that he will start to practice. Because the belief isn't just simply words. But you have to practice the belief. And when we are fighting against our sin, Small sin, bigger sin, no matter what. We have to start with these uh, really big sins. Like, because uh, early Christians, they knew this evangelical truth and they were practicing, they were effectively practicing it. And then you will, if you are doing like these early Christians, then you see the results sooner or later. And we see the believers starting from the 90s, 1990s. We don't have any biblical fathers, you know. Uh, I was also like a foolish one, you know. I was a believer for many years. But uh, I found out about this evangelical truth only some time ago. But a lot of things have changed, you know, in my life. But glory to God, God is so graceful, merciful, that He has shown this evangelical truth and we can practice this belief. And you know, the only thing you have to do is to practice and to do the things. And what is the difference between the believer and non-believer? You can see what is the difference already, who is practicing and who is not practicing. That's the difference. Because there are a lot of people also who don't know this evangelical truth, and that's why they are not practicing. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm finding out everything, that I'm uh, super fine. But there is a difference between those early Christians and the Christians uh, who are living nowadays. And we can see the book of Acts. We see also these... Nazarenes, and you know, these prophets, 